hello everyone, uh, my name is Yussi and this is my very good friend David. And to kick off, uh, we had a nice introduction, but I want to put a little bit out there about Unity for those of you who don't work in games development. So today Unity is about 1,500 people working on a tool set that's used by over 5 million game creators to create top-grossing games and award-winning games. About half of all mobile games made and released in the last 12 months were made with Unity, and about 70% of all released augmented reality and virtual reality content. Not just games, but all kinds of content. So you could say Unity has made it. It's a company that, on its own field of game development, is really achieved something really big, birth of a big vision. So that's what we're here to talk about on how actually we got uh, you, uh, David, Nicholas, and Joachim who started the company, took it from an idea to a vision and realized that. But, you know, we're here to talk about the vision, David. So okay. what's the vision of Unity? So the vision is to democratize game development. Okay. What does it mean? Really, like, yeah, you, yeah, okay, yeah, open it up for us. Democratize know, game development. What honest, does it mean? So, so there's, there's many ways of putting it. First, we were just a game company an incompetent game comp company. We, you know, we tried to make a game, we kind of sucked at it, but really, a, a a <laughs> it was pretty bad. Along the way, we, we were building these tools for ourselves, mm -hmm. and, then, and then at some point, you know, as, as you know, young people in basements tend to do, we were sort of thinking about the meaning of life, and, and you know, we were pretty good programmers, and, and we were thinking, like, you know, what does these tools mean? What, right. you know, what, what is the meaning of tools? And, and we sort of realized that you know, the, the history of you know, the human race you know, can be told through tools. Tools are a really, really fundamental thing. Um, maybe the most important thing of everything. <laughs> Not unity, but as a whole. So yeah. we're thinking about that, and then we're thinking about how new tools change the world and change industries. And, and, and uh, <clears throat> one, of, one of our founders, Nicholas, he, he's a very creative person. He's played music and made film. And, and he sort of saw this thing where, you know, the t tools uh, changed the music industry. Exactly. The four-track recorder changed completely. Like, you know, before, I don't know if you knew you know how music was recorded before, but you have a big room, and the musicians would sit, like, at different distances <laughs> to the recording equipment. Mm -hmm. And it was very expensive and very complicated. And then with the four-track recorder, the cost of production was brought down, like, a hundredfold. A hundredfold. And when That's that happens, huge. not only is it like cheaper to make music, but all kinds of music gets created that would not have been created otherwise. And we got rock music and all this stuff. So you were working on your own problems. They're like, <laughs> we want to make this game. We need this yeah. tooling. And it's not available, mm -hmm. so you had to make it. So, and then he looked at, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Actually making a tool could be a force <laughs> multiplier yeah. for also other people. Is that where the genesis of this idea? But it's like you could say that. But how do you go from like making a tool to saying like democratize game yeah, development? So, so, so in a way, you could say that democratize game development is just the way we summed up that idea. Okay. You know, let, like by giving a great tool, making it really easy, really cheap, um, maybe the whole industry changes. Not mm -hmm. just like you know saving some costs for some major company, yeah. which is useful, and many companies do that, and that's fine. But like, can we dramatically change the thing? And and uh, yeah, we summed it up in democratize game development, which is open ended and vague. And I always appreciated that about it because there's no end to that. There's no like end point. Like you're not done, yeah. um, and it's really informed the company and sort of given a very broad sort of vague direction. Right. And the cool thing about broad vague directions is that you know people themselves sort of you know initially just the three of us, but later more people can sort of infuse that with their own ideas. Exactly. And there's many answers to this question. So that was the genesis of the of the vision, and and it, it's actually. It stayed with the company today. If you yeah. go to an event Unity host, it's always there. It's something we say, and it, we really mean it. Mm -hmm. But in the early days, when you had to talk to people about and they haven't heard about Unity, how did that <coughs> vision statement help you kind of uh, get the company off the ground? Yeah. What, what did it actually do for you? It, it, it created a very sort of simple mental framework. Like sort of, oh, OK, that's what they're going to do. And you know the listener could then infuse it with their ideas, which were probably not exactly what we were working on, but sort of positive, friendly ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it just created sort of a, you know, just a sort of framework around the brand or like the, yeah. the cloud around the brand. So so it didn't go. I mean, we were a tiny company. We had no money for marketing or or anything. And I remember at, at one point I was talking to one of our competitors, 
Um, and he said, like, you guys are so great at marketing. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we had zero marketing people. So it, it was like a rallying cry, both internally and externally. Like, this is who we are about. It's yeah. a stake on the ground. Yeah. We are here to do this thing. And come with us if you want to do that. Exactly. Yeah. And then you get sort of this self-selection. People want to join the company because of that. And it creates a very strong kind of internal direction. Yeah. Um, and often a feeling of like, you know, the leadership is not actually in charge. <laughs> Uh, because you know we've promised this not just to the customers but also to our employees, um, and it, it can be a troublesome thing <laughs> because it's, it's sort of you promise so much. Like if you think about it, it's sort of you know every project, but you know a company like has sort of a lot of uh, degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. Like you, 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 as a as a leader in theory, you can make a lot of different decisions, right. but you dramatically reduce the number of decisions you're allowed to make. <laughs> We'll talk about that, that actually. That's actually great lady, and I really love that because it's my next question. So, you know, when you start off, uh, you're a small company, and you basically have all the freedom in the world. Mm. There's, there's almost no employees, there's no customers, there's no revenues. It's only just limitless possibilities. But once you grow, you know, suddenly it's not that easy anymore. <laughs> you have people to answer to, you have people who expect a paycheck in order to support their families. Every you month. Have customers okay. who want to release right now and like, where is, why are you not fixing these bugs? Mm -hmm. So can you talk to an example or two where holding on to this big vision, this big dream that you want to realize, meant that you actually had to walk away some, from something you say like, you yeah. know what, this <coughs> would be really important, but we cannot do this because it would compromise our big vision. Yeah. So you know, a, a big promise like this creates sort of a, a long arc that you follow. And, and uh, yeah, it forces you to ignore or at least you know, not run after a lot of things. Uh, actually, for a long time, I, 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 well, no, after a long time, I realized that um, the worst decisions we had done in the company's history were decisions where we sort of decided to betray this idea. <laughs> And, and why would you do that? Was it just a big ball of money? A, a ball of money, yeah. Like right. you see, like you know, the military industrial complex. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the game industry is like a hundred billion dollar industry, sort of all included. Mm -hmm. And the military industrial complex is what a hundred times that? I, I don't even know, but it's a lot. Yeah. So if you like, if you just get one percent of that. Right. Um, and so we were sort of, you know, lured a little bit by that. Fortunately, we didn't betray the whole thing. But you know, we started sort of, you know, we had a lot of them using Unity and for training, and some of it is charming stuff, like you know, post-traumatic stress treatment and you know, things that are, like are not that offensive to the sensibilities. Um, so we sort of started exploring it, or like ran after it actually, and yeah, it's just it's a very different industry, and and we would have to, had to change the company quite a lot to do it, so and, and 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 the company like this, all these people that were like in the team, you know, had pretty strong how to say like um, like. Uh, Allergic reaction to Allergic the whole reaction, thank you. Yeah, or like, yeah, well, yeah, well, I was looking for a different word, but thank <laughs> you. No, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Um, yes, and, and um, you know, we're all friends, we trust yeah. each other, so we believe that, you know, if we make a lot of money here, we can fund the core product. Exactly. So it's not, it's not going to betray it, but it's also, um, you end up with something that sort of requires different people. So, uh, so I think maybe, maybe the, the, the vision of Unity made us in, unable to do it. So it might actually hurt us. Uh, on the other hand, you know, it's, it kept us very sort of unified, and, and I think it's probably a better company for it. Yeah. So at, least, at least a company that I enjoyed working for more. So that, that was a decision where there was a little bit of step taken towards the direction and then corrected. But is there some time where you say, like, I really wish we would do that, but we cannot and we will not? I don't know. No, not. Or is there a time where, like, <coughs> yeah, all right. no, I, no, I, not necessarily, but it's but, but so it was, but that I think that would assume that there was never, um, or that actually is, uh, pr means that you were so internalized with the vision that you would never even contemplate something that would tremendously break that. So you were tempted, but you were like, you had that, so yeah. it was so ingrained. And I, I think there was a company that was also. One thing about this being a CEO, you can set the direction, but then the direction holds you. Your employees, mm -hmm. as you were talking about, actually were holding you accountable. Yep. So kind of at the hard side of having that big vision, once it's imparted, you, it's really hard to change. Yes. You're, you're fixed. You have to go. Absolutely. It, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, there's a beauty to reducing the degrees of freedom. Like exactly. there's, it's, it's commitment. It's, you're promising. It's like being in a relationship or something. Um, no, absolutely. So. One thing I wonder about, because the vision of democratization is 
it's, it's almost like something that inevitably leads to the conclusion that, hey, this should be free. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really take the democratization all the way to the end, you should give away the software. But we're running a company, and that means there are people whose salaries should be paid, and nobody wants a tool if it's not good. Yep. So you need to actually pay good people a good amount of money to make that. So sure. it's a kind of paradox. You want to basically give it away free, but you cannot give it away mm -hmm. free. And we talked about about this a little bit, so free and revenue, vision and call side reality, is that the ugly side of the vision? So it's, it's actually not always so pretty it's or not messy? It's not ugly though, because it, it, you're, you're working towards a longer term goal. And you know, I was talking to uh, Niklas Sandström of Atomico uh, last night and some other VCs, and, and there was this general agreement that you know, companies that are short term focused on, on money and revenue, they, they, they go badly, like, I mean, they don't succeed as much. So there is by having a sort of a long-term arc that holds you to something, mm -hmm. it, 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 it sort of, you know, it, I, think, I think it makes sure that you, you, know, you, you create more momentum of your own. So, um, so but, but like uh, early on I was like, no, I want Unity to be free for everybody. Yeah. Um, and now it is for everybody who doesn't have a lot of money. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit because uh, you mentioned that one of the kind of, if you were the, the boldest and potential riskiest moves was actually Making something that people used to pay good money for, yeah. completely free for people to use until, a until they hit a certain amount of revenue, which a lot of people also unfortunately may abuse. But giving away something people paid for, mm -hmm. how did that make, how the decision making, you're in the executive suit and you're saying like, if we do this, it, it will be fantastic, it aligns with our vision but it may completely screw up our bottom line and our top line and we may lose a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. So talk to that, like, balancing that, that's a really a hard balance between the vision sure. and the reality. So, so we had wanted to make the software free for a while. We had talked about it a number of times. Then one of our employees, he was a programmer, uh, he was like, guys, we got to do it. Like, you know, we promised this. We are democratizing this thing. Like, it can't cost all this money. Um, and he had a good sense of, of, you know, the developer community and he was exactly right. Uh, so we did some analysis, and then we raised some venture capital, actually, so, so we'd have a buffer. Uh, because it was pretty risky. Like, we were running on, like, yep. basically no profit, so we had no buffer. Like, we had no cash in the bank. So you change the pricing scheme of something, it can have very unpredictable consequences. Exactly. Like, you, 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 you lower price of a product, you know, that's, you can't calculate how much it's going to cost you. And you can almost never raise it up. Exactly. It's, it's a non-linear thing. Yeah. So, but having several million in the bank, we, we, we stepped into it, and, and um, our community actually freaked out a bit yeah. um, because you know, people were like, but I paid for it, now somebody else is getting it for free. It sort of created confusion, and I, 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 we understood some of these emotions. But again, like being pointed at the long-term goal, of course it was the right thing to do. Right. It did cost us money, though. We, we, we had our flat revenue for like half a year after it. And I'm actually curious, what did the VC say? Oh, they, like, they, they loved it. They loved it. Yeah, of course, because the VCs... Because they have always more money for you to take. <laughs> exactly. No, but, but, the, but the thing is, like, you know, we came from Europe. We were not very sort of sophisticated when it came to the technology industry. Like, everyone here is like 100 times more sophisticated than we were at the time. I don't think so. No, because there's so you much... You had a good instinct. Yeah, we, we had instincts, but there's so much knowledge and like, this is codified right. now. You can read about it and go to conferences and so on. Um, but in Silicon Valley, they've built this kind of... Um, Lore, like I mean, this, yeah. this is, it's a system. It's a playbook yeah. for how yeah. to grow Absolutely. businesses. Really so, in, in one sense, your instinct and your vision led to a a tool set and a mission that was defining. But also, it led to that I would say a really a defining decision that catapulted Unity from well, you know, it's it's a good tool to oh my god, I can get it for free, I can try it out, and yep. suddenly, I think it led to an explosion of user base. It was amazing. So, so then the next problem is, you know, we hire a lot of people and it's expensive and it's complicated. Um, and then at some point we're like, okay, you know, there's only so many developers in the world. There's more. We've not sold to ever all of them, but we ne need to grow the base. And, uh, and, and I was, um, how, uh, my, my, my soul was in turmoil for a couple of years. I was in a panic because I could see this problem arriving. And, uh, and of course, how do you, you could raise the price, but that sucks. You could take away the free version, that sucks. Uh, you can sell to more people, we did that, um, but we had to find another path. So I was so lucky <laughs> that we had been sort of friends, at, or at least very good buddies for a while, uh, and you had built something. Actually, you had built a company with the same vision, so, right? Yeah, we also started a, a mission of servicing developers like yeah. ourselves. We were a developer, we made a tool for ourselves and turned out to be a successful advertising network. 
and a joining Unity one. was... I want to tell the story because the moment uh, I was uh, announcing the acquisition to my team, I was so nervous. I suspect, by the way, that you may have built the first ad tech company in the world com comprised only of like good, honest people. <laughs> 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 yeah, ad tech is kind of gray, uh, for those of you who don't know. Uh, so the story is, and so this is how big Unity's vision is. The, the morning we announced that we've been acquired, I was so nervous about what my team of 40 people would say. And the moment I said, by Unity, they went up and said, yay! And if it would have been Microsoft, I don't think it would have happened. So that's a, that's a testament to Unity's yeah. vision. But kind of, we only have a minute and a half to, uh, to do this, uh, the rest of this. So I want to I wanna give it um, some sense of closure. So a lot of you are startup founders. And I have two questions for you. Is it essential to have a big vision? to build a startup? Is it like, when you think of all the troubles you go through, mm. how important is it, and, or how much can you increase your chances of success? People uh, that have analyzed startups, VCs typically, because they spend a lot of time analyzing startups in a big picture, looking at a lot of them, categorizing them, you know, flocking them by region and size and blah, 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 blah. They have come to the conclusion that the best companies have a big vision. Um, so there it causality is. or uh, <laughs> correlation, I do not know. But yeah. that is believed. I, 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 just as a human, you know, why would you work on something that's not meaningful? <laughs> it's I, just, I, you know. so I fully agree. And now, now the really fun gut feeling question, because you cannot tell anybody what their vision should be. They have to find it. Mm -hmm. But how do you know, how do you feel when you find your vision? Like, how do you need to feel? Like, for, in part, the last bit of wisdom for this guy, when, how, did, how can they know they've landed on something? When you feel love. <laughs> like, when, you, when, that, when, I when you actually that, feel. It's don't, like, ex don't explain. I think that that's, we got 10 seconds left, and that's a perfect ending. You know, Unity is a love letter from us to the developer community, right? And, that's, and they feel it, and we feel it. It's a real thing. And we're right on time. Oh, man. Find your love, <laughs> find your vision, and go build the next awesome company. Thank you. Aww. Thanks, Yossi. Thank you. Thank you, guys.